Okay, um, we've got a crankshaft here from a 1960 Royal Enfield Bullet known as Roger, owned by a chap called Dave the Bass who's visiting me today and kindly holding the camera. Good morning. And um, I've got this set up in a lathe a little differently to how I usually have them where I hold them between centres end to end. Um, purely because the end of the drive side main shaft, the threaded portion, is very very slightly bent. Um, it's not a problem mechanically or structurally. The part that runs in the main bearings and holds the engine sprocket and even the alternator rotor is fine. It's literally just the threaded portion and it's very very slightly bent so obviously there's no way I can get accurate readings when I hold it between centres. So I've actually got the drive side main shaft held in the chuck of the lathe this time with the timing side shaft centred as normal um, by using the centre on the tailstock and I've got readings where hopefully we can see um, we've got about a thousandth of an inch on that clock there on the drive side main shaft where the where it would run in the main bearings and over here on the timing side we've also got a thousandth of an inch now if we look closely we can see that as one needle rises the other one falls so you've actually really got a run out overall of two thousandths of an inch which is still more than acceptable it's very good uh, you could even get away with three or even four at a push so that two thousandths of an inch is great i've got to split the crank to change the big end and um, i'm going to be aiming for run out figures similar to these hopefully um, and another thing that I've done because of the way I've got the crank held in the chuck of the lathe and in the centre is I've put marks I've got a mark there a mark there a mark there and a corresponding one on the centre in the tailstock so that I can hopefully put it all back together in the same relative positions of rotation and then I can aim for figures like that and when I get them I know it's going to be all right because I'm told but the engine ran nice and smoothly with this flywheel in it, uh, this crank assembly in it, with that sort of run out. And it was only a matter of the big end itself wearing out that uh, necessitated the engine strip. So what I'm going to do next is take this crank assembly out of the lathe, split it, change the big end and put it back together and try and true it to figures like we see there. And uh, if I can do that, the job should be a good one. And uh, we'll come back to it and see what we get after I've split it and uh, rebuilt it and hopefully trued it. Well, here we are again with uh, Roger's crankshaft, all rebuilt with a new crank pin, floating bush and a new old stock con rod with a new outer race in it as well. And it's all back together and trued. And, um, I've got it set up as before because of the slight bend on the threaded portion of the drive side main shaft. I've got it held um, in the chuck by the drive side main shaft and I'm rotating it now. And we can see on the clocks there we've got a couple, no more than two and a half thousandths of an inch, I would say, a couple of thousandths of an inch movement up and down at the uh, positions on the main shafts that will run in the main bearings. Uh, not too alarming in any case but what we've got as a bonus if we look at both clocks together the needles are rising and falling together at the same points of rotation so what little movement we've got on the needles we can actually cancel cancel one out against the other so effectively we've actually got no run out and that's about as good as you could wish to get so um, I'm pretty confident that this crank we run nice and smoothly and truly in its main bearings and um, Roger should have a new lease of life with a new big end. The old big end could be a topic to discuss it on its own by the way because yeah. I've never seen anything like that before. Some very It wasn't me! Clever, very <laughs> clever trickery and tomfoolery went into that. Uh, very sound engineering but very unusual way of going about salvaging a big end. But anyway, we've got a proper brand new item in there now, all ready to go oilways lined up and blown through and cleaned, relief valve which you get on the Redditch flywheel assemblies has been checked and blown through and cleaned. So this is all ready to go back into an engine and probably do another 60 years all being well. Okay.
Well, I'd see me out there, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. And me, don't come back for me, I'm yeah. fixed. <laughs> I'll be long gone. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Thumbs Cheers. up. Cheers.